Thank you. Um, there's something being called in the world artificial intelligence. You call it AI. AI has the ability of a retarded person. Basically, AI today has only eight points in IQ. Most humans have 98. Unfortunately, <coughs> something is happening in the world. AI is growing its IQ slowly by two to four p points per year, which means that within the next 12 years, AI will be smarter than any child who left high school. But there's a bigger problem, much bigger problem. You see, <coughs> there's certain movement in the body that lower IQ. And some people do it every day, many times per day, in order to lower their IQ. Is IQ important? Yes. You can talk about EQ as much as you want, but having high EQ with low IQ is not usable. So, let's talk about it. <coughs> the artificial intelligence will grow two points per year. Teachers in schools fighting every day to hire the IQ of the kids. We need to hire the IQ by two points every year in order for a child to leave the high school with 122 minimum, which is still not a genius. 131 is the genius. So at least 122 in order to survive. So teachers are working hard. But at the same time, there's something else out there that lowering the IQ, it's a movement of a hand. Some people between the age of 20, between the age of 12 and 32, do this movement sometimes around 40 times per day. And then in the next, in the next years, it will lower the IQ by six points per year. This is the movement, and this is how it looks. You raise your hand up to here. You do like this with the hand. You look and you smile and you click. Selfie. You can do it with the left hand. Selfie. How it lowers IQ? Well, basically, it's quite simple. You see, <coughs> Instagram is the base, basic tool for communication today for a lot of young people and sometimes young in their mind, but older in age. 20 years ago, we learned that a picture is worth 1,000 words. Well, basically, this was belonged to the art field, not to a selfie. So now, when I want to grow my self-esteem, I would do like this, <coughs> around 40 to 80 times per day. I will click and send it to my friends, a couple of my friends would say, oh, you're beautiful, oh, you're beautiful, oh, you're beautiful, you're so beautiful, you're amazing. So the self-esteem is growing because you know that you are amazing for your beauty, not for your brain. You cannot see the brain because there no, there's no brain scanner in the selfie. And suddenly, when you use pictures instead of words, you don't need to use words. And yet, words are being used for thinking, for questioning, for research, for development, but we become cave bands again. We go to the caves, picture instead of words, go talk to them after 10 years. They are retarded, most of them. They cannot think, they cannot ask, they cannot talk, they, they, they cannot co contribute to a conversation besides of, oh, I like it, oh, I like it, it's very nice, oh, yes, it's cool, I love it. Even college students, they go to college in the United States, but every opportunity they have, Beautiful, I'm so beautiful, I'm so smart. And you know what else? It's better than drugs. Every time you need it and nobody's telling you it's wrong. Amazing, Instagram is lowering the IQ of human. So whatever you will do in class, it will never help you. And we need geniuses to live in the future. Because we need to communicate to an AI that we can communicate, communicate to the robot who will be the manufacturer of everything. We will not need human to manufacture anything in the world, just to communicate with AI. But the AI will have 160 IQ in 10 years. 
The AI will not want to communicate with people with 60 IQ because they will be too stupid for the AI to communicate. Welcome to the new world. I'm Offer Breyer. I work for a small organization that is growing fast around the Far East and the Europe, and, and Europe and Czech Republic in, in especially. I built this organization only last year. Today, we teach children in schools. We have only 530 students today, but we started eight months ago. We have only 26 teachers today, but we started only nine months ago to teach them. And next year, we're going to have 10,000 kids. There's a waiting list and 400 teacher, teachers. That's only in the Czech Republic. That's before the work we do in Korea and in Singapore and other places in the world. So you think that Korea and Singapore have the best education systems in the world. You're totally wrong. They're not. They're only good at tests. Let's go to Finland. Finland is number four in the world in education. They were number two. They went to number three. Now they're number four. The best education system that measure only short term. Short term means tests. But for the long term, I come from Israel, guys. We are number 45 in the world in education, the lowest and highly innovative country. Because we don't measure the short term. We measure what kind of child we want to have in 20 years. And we have those guys in 20 years, geniuses that lead the world of, of, of communication and data and robotics and everything else. And every company would love to have the R&D in Israel because we have the brightest kids in the world. And why is that? Because we understand where the future goes. And the future is about technology, isn't it? But future with technology, with low level brains, will not work. So welcome to Instagram world. How to lower your IQ by moving, by moving your hand 40 times a day. OK, great. So Stages is an organization that is going to build new brains that will be able to live in the post-blockchain environment. You are happy about blockchain, right? But it's passé. There's something beyond that that our children will need to understand to communicate. Can they communicate with it? Do you think that teaching them coding will solve the problem? They need an evolution of the brain to be able to do it. So let's talk about what we do. I need something to click upon. Is that the one? That's not mine. So you understand the problem with Instagram. We teach kids pattern recognition. This is a pattern recognition. It's a pattern. You recognize, you analyze, and you see the results. That's the only thing we teach. Pattern recognition to create highly innovative kids. OK, so some people want to jump into the future. What do they want? Oh, they go to Africa, and they teach blockchain and coding. But these people are not capable of this. They didn't go through the evolution of intelligence like Europe in the past and America today. They can't. They went bare, with bare shoes nine years ago. How can their brain understand what blockchain is? They cannot even recognize what is the meaning of the word. So welcome to the world. Jump into the future and you will fail. You can't jump into the future. You need evolution for this. Evolution of human brain is what we do. We accelerate how the brain functions daily in every class, five minutes per lesson, every day in school system. We don't change the, 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 the system. We don't change whatever you teach in class, because it doesn't matter what you teach. It doesn't matter for the future anyway. It's just the skills that your brain will have that are important. So we are involved in every class, every hour, for five minutes, training the brain. Because the most important part that will be left for human will be ideation. Not manufacturing. You will have robots that will do every part for you. You will have printers, printers that will print everything for you. The only thing is that you will have to communicate with a high intelligence okay, of AI. If you are not capable, it might not want to work with you. 
That's one of the reasons we have to raise the capacity of the brain more than investing in technologies that are not useful for those brains who are de declining right now in the world. So ideation and artificial intelligence and robots will be the future. By the way, the future is 10 years from today. I work for companies in Silicon Valley and Detroit and Germany. You will have to trust me that I do understand everything about futurism by action, okay? Not by an academic analysis. So, humans versus technology, okay? You see, the difference between human and technology is technology does not have passion, humans have passion. And the, difference, the other difference is that we have compassion. Not everyone has compassion. Some people are really bad people, you know. But most people have compassion. In order to understand a need in the market, you must have compassion in you to understand a need. Because compassion is about needs. And the best of them, though, of the best of them all, is one person who is leading one company in the world today. And we'll talk about him in a second. So, compassion means being able to understand needs. That's all. You understand the need, you provide the solution. <laughs> yes, you can use data. Data is not good enough. Trust me, I've been working for many companies in the world when we analyze data and until the point that we put, we'll, we'll put some in the data, some emotions, there's no solution. You have to understand the emotions behind the data. So, for our sake, we need to build natural mathematical brains. You know that in, in all over the world, people talk about how hard it is to teach mathematics. Ask a child, what do you want to do? Go home and do exercise in mathematics or go to Xbox? Just ask him. He will tell you, Xbox, but you know, I need to start because my parents want me to. But you teach mathematics at the wrong age. The brain needs to develop only one thing until the age of 11, imagination. Because in the world of imagination, you can imagine an iPhone and then give it to the engineers to build. The brain has no ability to understand abstract until the age of 11. Mathematics is abstract. You can study mathematics in two months of whatever you finish in the, the, the form of five years. You can finish if you have natural mathematical brain. So we build natural mathematical brains in our system. It's natural for them to understand, feel, and execute everything using mathematics in the brain, like geniuses of mathematics. So the four elements we, we, we do in order to use data in a smart way, we teach pattern recognition. We see patterns everywhere, patterns of faces of people who are looking at you, the pattern of the man who was on stage before and now he's writing something. We are watching the people around us in order to watch how it looks like. How many things you don't see right now because you don't recognize patterns? How many things you're missing right now? Our children have an automated machine in their brain to watch for patterns around the world, everywhere they go, whether they go to a to restaurant, whether they talk to a person, whether they design, whether they play music. They do pattern design. They break into parts the elements of what they saw, of the pattern they recognize, and we build something new out of it. Because creativity is not outside the box. Creativity is inside the box. You have to use what you have, not what you don't have. These are all different things that we've been told are not really important anymore today. So one picture does not worth 1,000 words. OK, so the short term versus the long term. We in Israel know how to build a guy from age three. So at 33, he will be CEO of R&D Microsoft Israel. Microsoft Israel is run by a guy of 32 years old that also sold this company for 300 million to Microsoft. And we have plenty like this. Plenty? Not really. Only 2% of the population. Okay. So the future is only about research and development by pattern recognition and pattern design and use of other skills like analogy and real-time composition. We create brains that can create. We don't talk about what we should do, we just do. I never talk about what we should do. Did I use the word should here? Not really. I'm a doer. I execute things. 
Whether I'll fail or not, I will execute. And I will take the risk, because I have the ability to take risks. So the basic thing that we do, we create brains okay, of what we call polythinkers. Polythink was invented 650 years ago. This is the skill that Leonardo da Vinci studied. How to create content, how to take content from different fields, find common denominator, and innovate and invent new innovations or new inventions in the world. He was able to do it because he understood all the world around him. And today we have people who focus just on C++. Uh, technicians, what we call. Good, we need them for now, but not for long. So, what is Polythinker? A guy who has a deep understanding about many, many, many environments in the world that can connect them. This is stages, this is what we do. We will grow fast. We are a very fast growing organization just because we take action and we don't talk about what we should. Thank you so much for listening.